Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. He's at the center of the U of M sex abuse investigation against a former university doctor, and tonight he is sharing his story. We're glad you're with us tonight at 11. With the investigation expanding against a former campus doctor, tonight U of M President Mark Schlissel apologized to those who were victimized. Yeah, the investigation was launched after a former student came forward saying he was molested by Dr. Robert E. Anderson back in the early 1970s. Coco McAvoy spoke with the former student tonight. And Coco, he says this happened during a medical exam. Yes, that's right. Good evening. We cannot share all of the details with you because they are very graphic. But Robert Stone said he wanted to share his story because he wants to help other people who may be struggling to come forward. I've carried the story almost a half a century before coming forward. Robert Julian Stone is sharing his story, and it's a difficult one, involving allegations of sexual abuse from the now deceased University of Michigan physician, Robert E. Anderson. It makes me want to cry. I felt completely disempowered to report this. Stone says he was a 20-year-old U of M student in 1970 and was looking for a doctor. I called a friend of mine, a gay friend in Ann Arbor, and I said, Look, I don't know, what, who do I go to? Who do I see? He says, oh, no problem. Go to Dr. Anderson. Dr. Anderson treats all of the gay men. He says Dr. Anderson started undressing and made Stone touch his private parts. After this happened, I was horrified. I was absolutely enraged and disgusted. Decades later, he wrote an essay to university officials and found out police were allegedly investigating other incidents of assault. I confess to having some lingering guilt that if I had been more aggressive at the time of my assault, I could have prevented all of these other men from being assaulted. Now, Stone is asking for transparency from the University of Michigan, and the university president is promising Stone and other survivors will be heard. I personally commit that you'll be taken seriously and protected from retaliation, and that accusations will be thoroughly investigated. And university officials are asking more people to come forward. The university created a hotline yesterday, and since they created that hotline, they have received 22 additional calls. Reporting live this evening, I'm Coco McAvoy, Local 4. All right, Coco. Breaking news just in from Detroit's west side. Police are at the scene of a deadly shooting at an illegal marijuana dispensary on Joy Road near Dexter. Police say three gunmen walked into the dispensary, posing as customers before opening fire. One person was killed and another was critically injured. Police believe the suspects got away with drugs and cash before leaving the scene. Superintendent of Romulus Community School is going to be off the job for the next two weeks after the school board suspended him during tonight's board meeting. The board says it is suspending Dr. Flanoya Hall for 10 days without pay for comments he made during the school board meeting back on February 10th. Hall is the acting superintendent in the district and has been with Romulus Community Schools since 2014. All right, wind chills are near zero mm. tonight, but... A warm up is on the way for the weekend, which is nice. But how low will temperatures go tonight here, Ben? Well, so far we're already in single digits, at least in the west zone. But you can see here in the metro zone, close to 20 degrees. That all changes. We're all going to single digits tonight. Here's your four zone forecast. We start in the metro zone. Six to nine is what we're expecting. In the metro zone. You get to the south zone. Really, it doesn't look a whole lot better. Six to seven, maybe, as we head towards tomorrow morning. West zone still in positive territory. Three to seven is what we're expecting. And still no negative numbers. That's the best thing we can say about the north zone. A lot of ones up there in Santa Lai County as we get towards tomorrow morning. Those are 70 and wind chills. That's the worst that we get in the upcoming week. We'll talk about how things improve as we head into the upcoming weekend in just a few minutes, guys. Ben. After a failed first attempt tonight, warrants have been signed for seven student athletes at Warren De La Salle High School. Five of those students are facing adult charges. The other two are going to be charged as juveniles in the hazing scandal that has engulfed the school now for months. Mara McDonald is at De La Salle tonight, where opinions on how this has been handled have been rather divided. I don't think that these charges today really are going to change anybody's attitudes here. You have deep divisions among the students and among the parents, and they question the credibility of the investigation. The pilot 
Cats were headed to the playoffs last year until the president of the school, John Knight, canceled the entire season on Halloween, citing what he called a pervasive hazing problem year. From the start, parents, police and coaches have said they're dissatisfied with how the school reacted. From the start, the administrators pulled kids apart. Uh, the, the initial day, they put the seniors in the chapel, took their phones away from them, and, and Kids get confused real, very quickly. We have an administration who does not have a plan and who hasn't had a plan on carrying us through any difficult times, let alone what our families are going through now. Police and prosecutors both said the school stood in their way when it came time to investigate allegations of hazing in the football locker room. Initially, uh, De La Salle uh, uh, really didn't uh, cooperate uh, as they should have as far as the administration. So much so, they announced there would be no charges here less than a month ago. Tonight, that's all changed. Two new victims came forward, and now police and prosecutors say there is enough evidence to charge seven student athletes with assault and battery, the boys allegedly using a broomstick in a threatening manner, but no sexual assault. There was no penetration, but there was an assault, and that's why they're being charged with assault and battery. How deep are the divisions here? Just last week, there was an off-site meeting of more than 100 parents who turned out disgusted with the way the school has handled this. They want the president to be fired here. They are appealing to the Christian brothers, both here in the United States and in Rome, to make that happen. We are in Warren. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. All right, Mara, the Wayne County Sheriff's Office is investigating after a large drug bust on Detroit's east side. This afternoon, look at this. Deputies served a search warrant in the area of Seven Mile in Irvington, and they found this illegal grow operation and parked outside two trailers filled with marijuana. Eight people have been arrested so far. Street value of what they found believed to be around a million dollars. Tonight, Detroit Fire Commissioner Eric Jones is defending one of his crews for trying to stop a drunk driver while in a fire engine. The latter 25 crew followed the car Tuesday night after battling a fire. The car was weaving in and out of traffic with a child inside the car. Well, tonight we have the call they made to dispatch, which included the moment they were told to stop their pursuit. Latter 25, you are advised not to do that in the event that you get into an accident. We will give police the information. Okay, she did make contact with up on the side of the road. I asked her if she's been drinking and she did say yes. Sources within Detroit Fire say firefighters should not pursue vehicles in a fire engine. Well, as soon as the crew was told to stop following, they went back to the station communicating with Detroit police where they last saw that car. A uh, Farmington Hills police officers on unpaid leave for an incident involving his now ex-girlfriend on Valentine's Day. Officer Mario Vetkic is charged with domestic violence, stalking, and firing a gun inside the woman's war on home. Uh, the victim, by the way, is also a police officer. Vetkic was arrested yesterday while he was on duty. He faced a judge today and pleaded not guilty. Investigators say a man was super drunk when he drove through a police line and hit two Warren police cars. Christopher Smedley admitted to having three drinks. Well, police say his breath test showed he was way over the legal limit. Two Warren officers were investigating a crash at 10 Mile and Mound earlier this month when Smedley apparently ran into their patrol cars. Both officers were hurt, but they are okay. He's charged under Michigan's super drunk law, which means having a blood alcohol level of 0.17 or higher. Congresswoman Debbie Dingo held a town hall meeting to hear from experts on environmental issues impacting downriver communities. The discussion covered a wide range of issues that impact air and water quality, soil and Superfund sites. Another topic addressed was the high water level and the threat a big storm could bring. Regular storms are really challenging right now, right? Because the water levels are so high, there's nowhere for the water to go. Regular storms are a pain. Record storms are going to be devastating. Well, to help combat that threat and others, people and agencies from local, state, and federal levels are being brought together to determine what resources are available and to weigh possible risks. Still ahead, Google is facing a new lawsuit over privacy concerns. Yeah, what state filed that suit claiming the tech giant is spying on children? Coming up. I didn't know when I jumped, I was actually going to be falling and five feet down. A FedEx worker pulled over when he saw a driver stranded. What happened next that sent him falling off a 75-foot bridge? 
Becoming a first, a tanker truck hauling jet fuel explodes during rush hour. How three good Samaritans were able to save the life of the driver next. A defining moment in Detroit's race relations. The mob wanted them out of this house because they were black and this was an all white neighborhood. Tomorrow at 6 a.m. for Black History Month. It's four o'clock, a lot has happened. Have you kept up with the day? Whether it's breaking news from downtown or around the world, or something special in neighborhoods or businesses around town. We've got you covered. First at four, then on.